Hey, how's it going guys? Today we're going to talk about upgrading the electrical system on a Kubota B2650. This machine here, this is a 2019-2650. This machine is about five hours old. Uh, it has only been driven around uh, just to, you know, and done remedial work uh, just to make sure everything worked. So from the factory, the ROPS version, again this is the ROPS version of this tractor, uh, this guy only comes with a, about a 14 and a half amp dynamo. This is the dynamo right here that I took out from the factory. Uh, this guy is only powerful enough to charge the battery and run uh, maybe a very small light or something. So if you want to do anything like put light bars on here, you know, up on the rocks or something, uh, you're definitely not going to do it with that. So to change out the dynamo for an alternator, it's a pretty easy task. It only takes maybe 45 minutes or an hour. All the items that I used to upgrade the electrical system were part of the kit that came from Kubota. The kit was whole goods item B7324, and the kit was actually intended for an older you know, Kubota B2630 tractor. Now, I have clearly installed this kit, and everything works great. I've had it now for a little while. And many other people on the forums and other places have also done the same thing. So this kit absolutely works. There are no challenges whatsoever. So, you know, here's the link that I used. I'll put that in the YouTube uh, notes here on this video as well. But again, uh, you know, Whole Goods Kit 7324. So here's a couple pictures of what came in the kit. This first picture here shows, you know, obviously the alternator here on the left. And then, you know, there's an oil dipstick. Now, you know, the Kubota... 2630 obviously was a little bit different mechanically than the 2650 that is sold today you know so it, it has this dipstick i didn't use the dipstick um, you know also on this picture you can see uh, there's a bag of you know nuts and bolts a relay and some zip ties i used almost all the nuts and bolts and you know, that relay there's also a fuse in there a 50 amp slow blow fuse one came pre-installed in the wiring harness now here on this next picture here you can see the other items I uh, used everything in this picture. There's a brand new belt, which is just a touch longer. It fit a little bit better for the alternator over the dynamo. The bracket for the alternator, which is definitely different, even though it, it looks the same initially. If you examine the two side by side, it's different. And the wiring harness. Now I'll show you where that wiring harness goes here in a minute. So let's take a look at what it takes to install the kit. So first thing you do, if uh, you have a front loader, you want to disconnect the front loader. There are tons of videos online that show how to do that. I'm not going to cover that. Next thing, you pop the hood up. Disconnect the negative battery terminal. Take that and just let it hang you know, down here on the side. Definitely do not perform this job with that connected. Take the cowling off. There's a cowling piece that goes on here like so. There is a post back here where the back of it rides on. That's what... That's what this guy is right here. So you're only going to remove the bolt that was right there, and then it's equivalent one down there. The other side is exactly the same. So, you know, to get that off, to get this exposed, you just disconnect these two here. You know, pretty easy there. That slides right off. This guy here uh, was not 100% obvious at first. Up under here, there's a screw, little tiny screw. You want to take that screw out first. That's the first thing you want to do to get this piece off. This guy here is just kind of sitting in place. It's got a little tab here. You know, it just kind of rests here. And I just very gently move that off to the side like that. There are two bolts on both sides. You take those two off, make sure that screw's out, and then just very gently lift it up and over. That way you got everything exposed. And again, as I said, this job takes maybe 45 minutes. Uh, if I did another one right now, I could probably do it in 30. So to replace the alternator, first thing uh, you want to do is disconnect the two little wires that were on here. That's the, uh, the pair of blue wires here. They just pull straight out. So you start by pulling those out. Next thing we'll do here is we'll take this bracket off. The original bracket looks identical to that bracket. You know, this is the old one here. You can see where the uh, dynamo was bolted up here. Only this part of the bracket over here where my thumb is touching is taller. It's offset. This bracket is up, this new one is up higher than the old one. You definitely cannot use this bracket. So 
there are two bolts back here. There's a bolt here and a bolt down there on the dynamo, same as the alternator. Uh, I started by loosening these two so that I took the pressure off the belt. Once I had the pressure off the belt, I completely removed the bottom one and then completely removed the top one. Once I did that, that allowed me to take the old dynamo out. The belt is different as well. I got a belt in this kit. The belt can just be slipped around the fan here uh, and taken off. And I slipped the new belt on. I let it hang on that part right there. Once I had the new bracket bolted up, I put it in here and then it's got some play in it where it can kind of move around. I let it hang all the way to the, you know, we'll call it the gravity position all the way down. Tighten these two up here. Remember they're only 10 millimeters and you're going into aluminum. So don't over tighten those. But I put, uh, put the provided bolt from the kit up here through the top, hand tightened that down. Now down here, there's an insert in the bottom of the alternator. It's inside of here. This is a pretty tiny bolt right here uh, as far as diameter. So the insert goes in here. There's a spacer that goes right here. The factory washer and nut that came off the dynamo are reused back here. You put that through. There's a harness that comes with this kit. It's got a couple of plugs on it uh, and a couple of uh, you know, rings on it. So first thing you wanna do is you wanna connect the, uh, the power feed right here and plug this harness right here in. And again, that harness comes with the kit. It, it kind of loops from here, around here. It's got this integrated you know, uh, fuse right here. And then there's this wire right here with a loop. You can just barely see back here that that wire feeds up underneath this boot and onto the positive terminal here of the starter. Now, I also put some heat shrink tubing on the exposed metal ends of that uh, former dynamo connection. I zip tied them right there to that guy. So this harness here and the loom comes around here and comes back up here. It's this one right here with the white and it comes under here, around here and up here. And here's the end of it right here. It's got this big plug on it, which only has two wires in this side and there's a whole bunch here that don't get connected. And then over here, there's a relay. There's an included bolt here that uh, comes in the kit. You bolt the relay here. I chose to put it kind of a little bit of an angle there, you know, so that the wire was closer over here and you plug that in. So those are the only two connections. There's no splicing, there's no cutting, nothing like that. After watching this video, I realized I forgot a step. If you look very carefully at this screenshot, you'll see in the upper right hand corner, there is a dark piece of cast metal. I believe it's aluminum. And that is the voltage regulator that the old dynamo plugged into. Now, the harness that I've got my finger on had you know, part of it that runs back to the new alternator. The other piece, the piece that was already under the dashboard, was plugged into that voltage regulator. What I forgot to mention is that that has to be disconnected from the voltage regulator and then fished over here to the left-hand side of the tractor. And again, I'm saying left and right as uh, the driver on the tractor would see you know, the left and right of the tractor. So you have to move that part of the harness over here and there's a couple of zip ties that come with the kit and you want to make sure you secure that wire harness there. Now, I did not remove the voltage regulator, but I did secure the wire that, that was attached to it there. So I left it up underneath the dash. In hindsight, I probably should have pulled that out, but you know, there's been no problems now. It's been a couple of weeks since I've done this. I doubt there ever will be. I fired everything up. I put, an a, uh, I put a multimeter here on the terminals after I reconnected this terminal here. And when I have the tractor idling, I'm registering 14.4 volts, which means that the battery is charging. And that means everything works pretty good. Have any questions? Leave them in the comments. Thank you.